Haze is a name that you'll come across quite frequently across Bengaluru, from the Kempegowda International Airport to the Kempegowda statues that dot the city. And why not? After all, he was the man who created the city in the first place. So on this episode of Tales and Trails, we decided to go looking for Kempegowda in Bengaluru, and what we found was simply fascinating. There is a reason why Bengaluru resounds with the name of Kempa Gauda, a feudatory of the great Vijayanagar kings and a contemporary of Krishnadevaraya, the most famous of them. The most famous of the Yelahanka chieftains who ruled around 500 years ago, Kempa Gauda, who was based in Yelahanka near today's international airport in Bengaluru, did what few others in India had attempted, create a new hub for trade in a location that was at an important crossroad. Dr. K. Aruni, the head of the Indian Council of Historic Research, Southern Division, has spent the last two decades studying Kempa Gowda, his impact on the city, and how Bengaluru evolved. He believes that the heart of the city's history is its geography. I think most of the cities actually, you know, are developed by because of geography, surrounding geography. Bengaluru is a very, uh, you know, important place. Uh, it is actually located on the east coast and west coast the mid of the east coast and west coast with what you call interland trade activities. Uh, when you back to the early settlements, we have the earliest settlements evidences around 8th century, much earlier also. It mentioned that you know Roman coins were found in Bangalore. Uh, why it was in not only one places and Bangalore, two places, different places Roman coins were you know recovered from there. It showed that you know there was a lot of trade activities in the Roman period, what you call early uh, Christian era. So, Bangalore was the location where the west, the western ghat we call it, or Deccan plateau. It stops here, southern edge of the uh, Deccan plateau ends here, and the, the, the northern edge of the Nilgiris, Nilgiri uh, hills, they actually joins from here. So, it is a junction of two different geographical locations. So, this is the tip of the, tip of the, the Deccan Plateau. Deccan Plateau, mm. the edge of that. That is why we get a highest, uh, you know, uh, uh, latitude uh, 900 uh, odd, altitude, yeah, yeah uh, of the uh, uh, meter from the sea level. It shows that it is a, a very elevated area. So, thereafter it is the land become the plateau. When you go to the east of the Bangalore, uh, when you go to the Salem, when you go to from here to uh, eastwards, the land become a flat. So, the hills actually stops here, that is why Bangalore uh, you know, opted very important place and many histori uh, uh, historical evidence show that the, uh, from the ancient period, rulers that try to control and occupy this land. Interestingly, it is a commonly believed myth that the name Bengaluru comes from Bendakalu Uru meaning boils beans. Legend has it that on a hunting expedition in Yelahanka, the Hoysala ruler King Veerabalala II who ruled in the 12th century lost his way and an old woman offered him boiled beans to eat. Impressed by the generosity, he named the city Bendakalu Uru or the city of boiled beans which was shortened to Bengaluru. However, this legend cannot be true because the earliest reference to the name Bengaluru comes from an inscription in Begur in the 9th century which describes the battle of Bengaluru. But the emergence of this area as a potential commercial hub happens much later with the rise of Vijayanagar. Enters to the, uh, the medieval period, this land was a, you know, attracted by the many communities, many you know, agriculturists because it is a barren land which call it, you know, not many people, my settlement were there. And Vijayanagara actually opted, they gave most of the employment when the, in the military reason because medieval period of the Deccan Sultanates and uh, Vijayanagara basically the military It was state. the rise of Vijayanagara yeah, as an Vijayanagara, empire. Yeah, empire. So, they were, opt, uh, they were giving a lot of employment to the, you know, the warrior clans. Many warrior clans emerged because of that because they were, they were um, got employed and also they were getting a lot of opportunities in the agriculture as well as the in the military. So, you you're saying that there was a migration of sort from the south and the, uh, yes. the east uh, yes. towards the this area because yes. of the great opportunity that the Vijayanagar's yes. rise. Uh, gave. Presently, uh, you know, um, 16th century, early 16th century, it is very clear there was a huge migration taken place. Uh, Kempegoda family is one part of it and we got it uh, in Andhra, Chittur from Chittur, 
many migrations. Even today, you look at the any Palegaras, we call it a feudatories of Vijayanagara, they come from the Andhra. Palegaras, yeah. Palegaras. Any Palegara you refer, Chitradurga, you look at the Shorapur, look at the any Kanakagiri, all the, the traces of the origin status from the Andhra. So I'll take a step back because in this period was also the period with the beginning of European interest. Did this, this action in this period also get precipitated with all the trade action that was happening yes, to Europe? Yes, no, you know, it's a landmark is the 1498, Vasco de Gama entered the Calicut, uh, Malbar area. Thereafter, a lot of interactions between the, you know, naval uh, contacts with, and actually that opened a new gates, particularly the down south, western Ghat, uh, western India. A uh, lot of trade, particularly horse trading, was the monopoly of the Deccan as well as the uh, Vijayanagara kings. Uh, if you look at the map of, of the Deccan region, uh, the port of Mangalore was the entry point for a lot of the horses from yes. Arabia and the west. And it had to make its way through Bangalore yes, to go towards um, the Hampi, East, yeah, uh, Hampi, which is the Vijayanagar yes, capital. So this route was very important. Very important. And they were fighting, of course, the Bijapur and the Golconda yeah. uh, yes. kings. And for them, what would be the entry point? Entry point is the Dumbal, we call it. the, uh, the South of Alibag. So, yeah, South of Alibag. And uh, next one is the Batkal. The Deccan was, Ratnagiri was a major part. Then the uh, but, uh, Dumbal and this uh, up to Goa was another entry for the Deccan Sultanate. Whereas uh, Vijayanagara, they opted basically Kenra coast. Bengal was the middle plot. So Bengal was also important for the Vijayanagara down the uh, southern part of the Vijayanagara middle. So Nayakas, that's why feudatories they occupied this place. Records show that Kempagauda's family came from further south in Kanchi. This migration actually taken place as a 16th century middle. There is a a number of uh, you know records which contemporary records they mention however the local uh, legends also they talk about the the they migrating from the country to but i look at as a historian that it is a tendency uh, a trend was already occurred in the uh, coming from the east to west basically to they were they were you know seeing the new areas this Bengaluru region was the major part of it Bengaluru region was the, you know slowly it was you know uh, coming under the trade activities and you know more uh, controlling power, political power control actually could have been easily, Bangalore region was a major part of it. So I look at Kempegowda family with from that background. Now the greatness of Kempegowda and that is why he is such an overarching figure in the city of Bengaluru today is the fact that he was savvy enough and smart enough to realize that hey there was a potential here to create an urban center and perhaps it was the first planned commercial center of India. I mean, that's the way I see it, where one man's vision transformed it. Later it happened in Jaipur, later the, the British did that with their port cities. But here was a man who thought very ahead of his times in creating this, this infrastructure around Bengaluru. Yes. You've done a lot of work on the architecture of Bengaluru. Tell us what the influence of Kempagowda is here. Yes, ma'am. As a commercial city, he looked at Bangalore as an important place where you can you know, expand eastwards and westwards communication can come there. So that's why he selected this area surrounded by hills and on the trade route of the ancient trade routes like Mangalore, Mysore. If you want to go to Mysore from the uh, 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 Madras or Andhra Pradesh, it has to go through Bangalore only. And even from Kerala, if you want to come yes. up, it has to go through yeah. Bangalore. Even okay. from the uh, Kaveri to you want to go to uh, uh, Krishna River, or any, any towards the land, one has to pass through Bangalore. So that's I think a new vision, he has identified this with the commercial uh, city. Thereafter the you know circumstance develop because of trade activities, Portuguese and the Dutch people they identified and the most activities even though west coast was very active for only certain trade activities, they were catering to the only empires. But when it comes to the you know pepper or when you want to commercial you know uh, goods, the East coast was very pop, oh, very important because it could reach to the Bengal, which goes to the China. East coast was very important. So it, when they identified with uh, communication with the Burma, uh, uh, China, Bengal area, one has to pass through all over the sea route. It was too long too to come long. back all the way. So it was the, much easier uh, to cross across. Yeah, interland was very important. They Bengal became a one place, significant place, junction place. So most of the goods in the ancient, in the medieval period, there was a, uh, you know, uh, compulsorily they have to give a, uh, you know, a revenue 
or what you call tax, toll tax, those take the goods from one place to another place. So Bangalore became the toll tax, tax collector. Area. Uh, actually, uh, traditionally we know some historic uh, documents that he invited traders as well as the artisans from the eastern Bangalore, what you call present Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu area. That's why we get a lot of you know uh, migration from there. Artisans set, settled in Bangalore and you know sericulture was also part of the one of the one. So textile was major uh, flourishing area and commercial particularly uh, what you call you know spices, trade activities, they, Bangalore was the major part of it. Travel through Bengaluru and you will find a lot of references to Kemper Gowda, be it at the Bangalore Fort which was later rebuilt or the famous Bull Temple that also harks back to the time of Kemper Gowda who was not just a visionary but also a reformer. Kemper Gowda was a very important part of the Kemper Gowda. Kemper Gowda was a part of the Kemper Gowda. आ जनरल ना तंदो नेलेगुलस तकन्ता ये लोग कुडा बेद बेद रुत्ती वध का दा जनरल आगे दो आउट गलन ना तंदो ये पेटे गलले नेलेगुलस तकन्ता कैल्सवन ना मारता ने हाँगे आचरणे गलले कुडा आ केलों दो आ कंदा चार गलन ना माउंडे गलन ना आ उन तोड़ी तकन्ता वन दो कैल्सवन गलन ना मारता ने उदाहरणे के तो ना ये बेरे लड़ना कुड़बे का दंतों ना आचरण नहीं रहते हाँ आचरण नहीं उनको कुड़ा अता तड़दा अंतकंता नम्बर आई थी क्या गलो सीखते ये रीतियाँ ले बेर बेरे वादे तब माउडिया गलना आवं दरीतियाँ निराकर्ष तकंता मत तो ये ला समुदाय दवना तन्ना ज्योते ले आवं दागी कुंडोक्त and despite the fall of the Vijayanagar Empire, the city continued to flourish. By the mid-18th century, it became an important base for Hyder Ali and then a summer capital for his son, Tipu Sultan. Interestingly, the emergence of Bengaluru as a British cantonment town happened quite by chance after the last wars in 1799. British were not interested to make their cantonment in Bengaluru earlier. When the Srinagar Patna was uh, uh, defeated by the uh, 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 British, they wanted to have the capital, their uh, cantonment at uh, uh, Srinagar Patna. Because of mosquitoes, because of island, lot of mosquitoes there. They could not sustain because of mosquito bites. So they wanted to settle from away from the river. They identified Bangalore as another place where they uh, this location identified and they started a settling here. Thereafter, realized Bangalore is ideal because it is near to the on the way to Madras and uh, they can control the northern part of the uh, uh, Karnataka what you call Chitradurga area from Bangalore and this area and Tamil Nadu and Kerala you can you know control from the center place. place and the biggest containment of the British in South India was the Bangalore. After the, uh, Madras, Bangalore was the biggest containment. The last phase was formative for Bengaluru and it is only apt that the city that was always designed as a commercial capital led India's IT revolution as well, emerging as one of the country's biggest business hubs. A journey that started 500 years ago. It is amazing how geography played such a critical role in the history of Bengaluru. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Tales and Trails and do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Goodbye.